Good morning. Welcome to my living room for Tuesday morning's thought for the day. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, over overarching thought um, over the next few days and look at a few scriptures. Um, and my thought, I woke up this morning and I thought, thank God he's not ageist. Now, why did I think that? Do you know, I have a very strange mind at times. Um, and uh, my thought had come from uh, waking up and thinking about the uh, about the wonderful fact that God God speaks to us in various ways, and I was thinking about the verse in Joel, which uh, Paul, Peter quotes on the day of Pentecost um, about the coming of the Spirit, and it's in Joel chapter two, verse twenty eight. And it says here, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And it goes on to talk about maids, men servants and maid servants. Um, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Um, God is not ageist. That's, that was the thought in my head. God, and I'm going to go, th perhaps you can spend some of today thinking about examples in the scripture of things that God did with people of varying ages, um, particularly the extremes, the young and the old um, but this this word from from Joel is especially dear to me as we're in a society at the moment where um, there is a divisor divider in ages and it's this wretched virus which seems to attack uh, older people and very very young babies more than it does those who are in their teens, 20s, 30s and 40s, maybe even 50s, although there are exceptions, of course. But in, in general terms, the figures that were being quoted yesterday on the news were showed that the, the most vulnerable people in our society are the older people. So this virus is ageist. It attacks certain age groups and lots of things do. But... God makes it very clear in his word, and we're going to look at it over a few days, that here he's talking about children, sons and daughters. He's talking about old men and young men. And I'm sure he, he, will, he also included older women um, as well. That there is no prejudice in God's heart. Your age is not important to him. Um, your commitment to him is the only thing that is of importance. Your age is not important. Some people think, well, I'm, I'm too old to learn anything new. No, you're not. I'm too old to start any work for the Lord. No, you're not. I'm not in a situation to do anything for God. I'm too old. I can. I, all I do is potter around and, and I just manage to do everything I need to do. You are still in service to the Lord. You're not freed from it because you are older. Nor is the young person free. There's no, there's no reason to say, well, I'm going to please myself while I'm young and I'll serve God when I'm older and all the fun is gone out of life. Some people think like that. It's a crazy way to think. Give your best years to God. But, you know, we're going to look at some examples of people through the scriptures who God took hold of when they were older. And you know, I've studied the scriptures a great deal all my life. And my parting thought for you today is the word retire or retirement or retired does not appear in the scriptures. There's no, there's no end to our service to God. We don't put down our tools and retire. I, actually, it's interesting. There is no word for holiday in the scriptures either. It's interesting. 
the, the way it was planned and worked out was that we work six days a week and we have one day a week off. But to have a long break, is, is it just doesn't appear. Um, I mean, some people went into the wilderness, but they went into the wilderness to fast. They didn't go into the wilderness for a holiday. And there were times when Jesus took a few hours away from the crowds or all night away from the crowds. But the word holiday doesn't appear either. You know, and even for us, this is important for us. When we go on holiday, we don't go on holiday from our service to God. We don't get time off. We are committed, heart and soul, every moment of every day, till the Lord calls us home or he comes back to get us. There is no ageism. The prof proper, you can't say, well, because I'm older, God doesn't speak to me. No, it's not true. You can't say because they're, that because that's a young person, God can't be speaking through them. It's not true. God has used people of every age group, even really, really young children, when they've come to faith. Jesus loved the children. You remember he welcomed the children, but he also valued the elderly widow, giving her her donation in the temple. Age age is not of importance. And I believe very firmly that when we get to heaven, uh, we'll all be the same age. Um, those who die in this world young will not, will not be younger than those who die when they're very, very old. Now, I think it'll all even out. Um, I'll explain that to you maybe later on in the week as well, why I think that from the scriptures. But no retirement. <clears throat> we'll look at some verses to support that. But God, this is a wonderful thought, that God is not prejudiced. We must not look at people with and, and value them according to their age. <clears throat> because age in the scriptures is irrelevant. What a thought for the day. Be young at heart. Think about the age of people in the scriptures. How old were they when they did this, that or the other for God? Have some thinking and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.